enough to find a plantation. I had to go around the country and educate people about what immigrants do for this country or the fact that we are a country of immigrants. The fact is, ain't none of y'all trying to go and farm right now. Okay, so I'm lying. Raise, raise your hand. You're not. But I am. You're not. We done picking oh, cotton. Jasmine, you never picked cotton in your life. You don't even know how to grow food for yourself or your family. My dad picked cotton, but you, sweetheart, never have. Welcome back, everybody, to Starkey Forms. Deb, my name is Samantha, and I have an amazing video for you today on do-it-yourself storm shelters due to the erratic behavior of the weather. So before we get into the storm shelters, let me explain to you what is actually happening with our weather across the United States and the entire globe right now. Folks, we all know that they are geoengineering. If you don't believe that your government is doing things in the sky and that every natural weather pattern, including jet streams, has now been hijacked by bureaucrats as well as unknown forces, my friend, then you are still in the 1980s. Because most Americans realize that what's happening to our weather is not normal. People who want to know what this is and, and why it's happening. Can you give us an introduction? Yeah, again, the, the term geoengineering, a.k.a. chemtrails, the, uh, the layman's term for what we see happening in the skies. But this is weather modification on a global scale. In fact, these programs are so large and so all-encompassing that all other weather modification programs that go on on a, on a smaller regional basis are virtually, they're negated by the scope and scale of the global geoengineering programs. And, and these programs involve a number of aspects. You have the saturation of the atmosphere with various chemical and metal particulates. And there appear to be various purposes and objectives with this saturation. In conjunction with the saturation, which ionizes the atmosphere, makes the atmosphere more conductive, we have the HARP facilities high-frequency active auroral research program. These are ionosphere heaters. Many have heard of the HARP facilities. There's not just one or two or three. We believe there's at least 18 around the globe. Particulates, and then you add the ionosphere heaters, the entire weather system globally is virtually being thwarted. There is no natural weather at this point, and we really don't know what sort of climate conditions we would have necessarily if these programs were brought to a halt where the signal is most intense and that's what steers the jet stream. So then you add artificial ice nucleation, which is a chemical nucleation process. They can turn what should have been rain into snow and drop the temperatures of these storm systems by this artificial chemical nucleation. This isn't sci-fi, this is hard science fact. The weather disseminating agencies are trying desperately their, their task and they're all owned at the very top it appears by the Rothschilds and or other parts of the global elite complex. Rothschilds in particular are ownership of Weather Channel, Weather Central, Weather Underground and it was imperative that they own these agencies otherwise there would be great discrepancy in trying to explain away these events. Mainstream media truly hates President Trump folks and some of you may be on the fence right now but let me tell you He's doing what he can to stop the geoengineering, and this is how I know. He cut millions of climate change grants and scholarships to colleges like Princeton to try to slow this down. He's even, even cutting NOAA, the NOAA, which is over all the weather. He's cutting their funding, he's cutting their programs, and he's trying to trim the fat. But by doing so, I literally just almost swallowed a bug. I'm telling y'all, I love living on a farm, but <laughs> so buggy out here. Anyway, he's trying his best to reduce their ability to destroy the earth through these geoengineering programs. The best way to do it is cut their funding. So when you see people upset that Noah's funding is being cut, it's because they're brainwashed and they don't understand that NOAA isn't working for the people. They're actually controlling the information. So independent media sources that are trying to tell you that, whoa, the jet stream's not behaving as normal. This storm is somehow getting larger and it shouldn't be. Those people 
get their funding cut through places like social media, like YouTube will just take their money because they don't want you to be reporting the truth. They want you to mimic what every other channel is saying. You guys have seen it. Look at the Democrats, all with the same talking points. I've done videos on the MK Ultra mind control that comes from the CIA. God, that made me sound like I'm insane. Freak storms out of nowhere, this is wild. Late snow in March, tornadoes on the 31st, conspiracy folks are buzzing, it's harp. Yep, that big radio thing in Alaska messing with the sky. Trust me, this gets nuts, stick around. So, what's the deal? Posts on X are blowing up with maps. Look, cloud seeding proof. They say it's geoengineering, some secret climate control agenda. Crazy, right? But here's the kicker. Experts say harp can't touch weather. It's all ionosphere vibes, not storm making magic. Imagine this, March 30th, 2025, snow buries your town, phones light up, they're controlling it. Noah's like, nah, it's just climate change juicing up storms. But those viral pics, oof, they pull you in. Mystery, intrigue, a little what if, vibe. Here's the crazy part. No tech exists to whip up freak weather, yet the theories won't quit. So what do you think? But I'm not. I'm just like you, just an average American woman living my life, and I learned how to form. And when I did, I realized the flipping weather is insane. My fruit trees are testament that the weather doesn't even know what the weather's doing anymore. Real talk. If you own any kind of tulips or anything, you know what I'm talking about because your plants are acting out of sorts because they're confused too, folks. They are confused too. Also, speaking of funding, YouTube cut my funding. In other words, they took all my money. They make you watch my commercials on all my videos. I don't get a penny from that. Why? Because they don't want this information out there. So I need you guys to do me one solid. Look at the top of comments. There's a pin comment. There's four ways that you can support our channel and our ability to be independent journalists doing the research and then bringing it to you in a nice, perfect little video that you can sit down and watch and not waste your day because this takes all day to do this. Now, back to what I was saying. This is not a conspiracy. It's real and it's happening across the globe. So how can you protect you and your family inexpensively? Well, I dug around and found some amazing ideas on storm shelters, folks. And I wanted to share that with you because where I live, I can't do an underground storm shelter in South Louisiana. It would flood. Like we would drown in an underground storm shelter here. But if you're above the Mason-Dixon line or you're where it's hilly, in parts of Mississippi, Arkansas, even Texas, where it's drier, you could actually put in a nice storm shelter because you're not at sea level. I'm at sea level, which means my ground is saturated with water. So you have to know the environment that you live in. So here we go, storm shelter number one. This one's super cool because this was done in West Virginia. And it looks like they basically, the guys got together, they bought a Timu front end loader, I think my husband called, I don't know. It's, it digs dirt, it digs dirt guys, off Timu for like $1,200. Oh, an excavator, that's what it is. They dug a little hole, put the minivan and they covered it, mounded it with dirt. That is brilliant, brilliant. They said what they did was cut the exhaust so they wouldn't die from exhaust fumes, but they could still use things like the radio from the battery. Great idea, okay? Cause like I said, I can't, go underground, but I could mound you on see those top. caps sitting on the top. Call it riding out the storm, literally. It's the whole bus on the ground. A bus placed underground as a storm shelter. I'm ready for the, 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 the uh, tornado, you know. James and Claudette Hunter purchased a bus five years ago after a tornado ripped through the trailer park they own on County Road 40 West. It didn't do that much damage, but it picked up a trail and threw it across the highway. Concerned about their tenant's safety during severe weather. Well, she know it's there if she needs it. This underground bus was a refuge during the April tornadoes and the storms that passed two months ago. They were safe, and a lot of them said it all. Uh, it's roomy, and it just, it just had a nice time down there. The hunters say it was all about being frugal. When we started looking for retainers, and they were so expensive, so we start thinking about a school bus. They found this old Otaga County school bus built in 1985 from a junkyard for only $800. Now this bus has 20 seats and it can fit about 75 people on it, including people standing along the aisle. 
It's nine feet underground and the bus is 27 feet long. The hunters paid a man $700 to dig a hole deep enough to cover the bus. Then when we got all the dirt out and the bus down to the level of the ground, then we was able to bag the bus in the runway and then pull it down in there. You see those caps sitting on the top? Those are your air vents. And I have a kerosene lamp in there for a bag up. A unique underground shelter from the storm. Say, the bus under the ground is my absolute favorite, folks. Just the concept of using something that's already been built. And like she said, storage containers you can get tend to run about $2,000, even for the smaller ones. So if you've got a vehicle, a larger vehicle, even an SUV that doesn't run anymore and you can get a, a hole dug, I would think even if you went down two feet and placed the vehicle and then mounded with the dirt from what you dug, you could pull that off. Just anything that is secured to the ground to ride out the storm. Because I do believe that we are going to be facing more erratic storms. And then, guys, I hate to say it, we're basically going into war with Iran. So anything that's underground would at least help reduce your exposure to say like a nuclear blast. That one looks like a large walk-in freezer that is not being used anymore or a small storage container. And like they did, they just kind of dug it out, set it down, put metal on top and then put the dirt back. Like I said, it doesn't have to go nine feet underground, but it does need to be secured by the earth or bolted into the ground. I've got one more for you. I think this one is, they're using it more like storage, but you absolutely could use this one also as a storm shelter. This last one was a lot of money being spent on wood when they could have just bought a container and done something very similar. But hey, if you've got the money, go for it, folks. My thing is this. We have to start preparing ourselves for worst case scenarios, right? It is better to be prepared and never need it than need it in an emergency and realize you don't have it. Same with food. I give away the majority of what we grow here and our organic no-till to people that are needy in my community. It's just something that I enjoy doing. Um, if you live close to me, April 26th from 12 to three, we're doing a no-tilling around class. You're welcome to register. Look me up on Facebook under Starkey Formstead. All the information is there. And I teach people how to grow like this because I just think that if people understood how the earth actually worked, we could mitigate some of what's happening with our skies. I get a lot of questions. How are we gonna grow food, Sam, if what's coming from the sky is so toxic for us? Let me explain something to you guys. Bare soil is absorbing those toxins, but when you cover the soil, what's happening is you're trapping it on the top and then rain, the sun, the wind, it tends to keep it from ever getting to the soil, slowing it down. And then the little bit that trickles through that's toxic, that's what your earthworms are for. They literally can absorb heavy metals and bad bacteria and poop out what your soil needs and eat what your soil doesn't. They're amazing. But when you till the soil, you're killing the earthworms. It's like before they started geoengineering, they taught people how to destroy the soil so that when they did start geoengineering, you had no way to fight against it. Be looking Guys, I'm telling you, any day now, they're going to call me and tell me 
Growing Under a Poison Sky is ready to go out into the bookstores. They're finishing up the cover page right now. Be looking for that book. I'm going to show you how to grow organic food even with what's happening in the skies. I'm going to teach you how to clean your ground, your soil, your water, and your body. That's what I do. I'm an educator at heart. I spent 10 years in college, seven years in a public school system, seated a private school. I do tours on my property and I've helped people with homeschools. I love to teach. So you guys be blessed. Hit the like button, share this video. It is time for all of us to get in prepare mode.